All right, so guys, I'm talking about the anatomy of the head. Um, I think we have made individual videos on um, um, temporal fossa, and we have made individual videos on infratemporal fossa, okay? So on the basis of this, some people might actually twist up the two concepts, okay? Because they are both located on the side of the, of the head, and some people will feel like, okay, they are same things, no. Okay, one is temporal fossa, one is infratemporal. So from the name too, you know that one is up, one is down. All right. So the question is, um, what anatomical structures differentiate temporal fossa from infratemporal fossa? All right. So this is the temporal fossa. This is the infratemporal fossa. All right. So what are the differences between these two concepts? So based on relation to the zygomatic arch, this is the zygomatic arch. So that temporal fossa is above. Okay. So temporal fossa lies above the zygomatic arch. The infratemporal fossa lies below the zygomatic arch. Okay. So based on content, I don't have any image here showing the content. But if you want to see the content, you can go and watch the individual videos or you can use your atlas to see them through. So based on content, temporal fossa contains temporalis muscle, middle temporal artery, zygomatic temporal artery deep temporal artery and deep temporal nerve okay while the infratemporal fossa contains the inferior part of temporalis muscle it contains the medial and lateral pterygoid muscle and it contains the maxillary artery okay so this is still it this is our temporal fossa and the one down is the infratemporal fossa okay so based on boundaries Anteriorly, the temporal fossa is bounded by the frontal and zygomatic bone, all right? While the infratemporal fossa is bounded by what? Posterior surface of the body of maxilla, okay? That's anteriorly, okay, like in front, all right? So posterior surface of body of maxilla, while this uh, temporal fossa is by the frontal and zygomatic bone, okay? Frontal and zygomatic bone, frontal and zygomatic bone. Then posteriorly, Temporal fossa is bounded by what? Supramastoid and inferior temporal line. Okay. Why the infratemporal fossa is bounded by what? Anterior surface of condylar process of the styloid process. Okay. Temporal fossa is bounded by um, supramastoid and inferior temporal line. Okay. This is the if. This is the. Okay. Uh, this is the inferior temporal line, okay, inferior temporal line, that's posteriorly, okay, and the supramastoid. Why, okay, yes, and the supramastoid crest, okay, so this is supramastoid crest, this is supramastoid crest, okay, it binds the temporal fossa posteriorly. Then, the infratemporal fossa is bounded by the condylar process of styloid process okay condylar process of thyroid process should be this one posteriorly okay then the boundary superiorly temporal fossa is bounded by the superior temporal line definitely this is the superior temporal line a superior temporal line why the infratemporal fossa is bounded by what on that surface of the great wing of sphenoid on that surface of the great ring of spinal, on that surface of the great ring of spinal. Inferiorly, uh, the temporal fossa is bounded by the zygomatic arch, okay? You know that it is above the zygomatic arch, so inferiorly it is the zygomatic arch bounding it. But the infratemporal fossa is bounded by a point where the medial pterygoid gets attached to the angle of the mouth, okay? So if the medial pterygoid muscle is here, gets attached to the angle of the mouth and like this and is fa is forming the inferior boundary of the infratemporal fossa okay so guys that's it about the differences between the temporal fossa and the infratemporal fossa hope you guys enjoyed this lecture all right see you guys in the next one bye